Welcome back to the Exeter City Tactical Rebuild, a rebuild like no other. Here we are attempting to take a League One side, a lower league side, and transform them into Pep Guardiola's prime Barcelona, playing Tiki Taka football along the way. In this video, we're going to walk through our process throughout the season. We're currently in January right now, and we've had an up and down season, if I have to be honest with you. If you look at the team stats so far, looking at the points per game, we have 1.42 points per game. I need to put it into context as to where we were expected to finish in the league. Exeter City were actually expected to finish in 14th place but we currently have 1.42 points per game and then if you look at the most goals we're well, not even in the conversation and I had a lot of fix about this and I went on to comb through the data hub to find out what exactly the problem was and I went on to fix it so much later I do expect that we're going to start scoring more goals. If you look at the schedule just before we lost to Reading by two goals you know we started scoring heavy against Wickham Wanderers and Portsmouth and before then we we're playing 1-1-2-2-0-0 and you can see how terrible it was before so we have gotten what actually was works for us in the last two games i'll show it to you in this video but the thing that really stands up for me as to how good this tactic or tiki taka philosophy in the lower leagues has become for us is that we had the fewest shots against in our teams or in our league you can see that exeter city has only 212 shots against everybody else is like you know second third fourth fifth which is ridiculous really we normally have the ball so the opposition really has time to actually you know pepe our goal we also have the best pass completion in the league with 90 i think we were in second place before but now we're all the way up in 90 percent as the best passers in the league bolton and postma will obviously make a case but i'm sure at some point we're going to overtake them and become the lone passers in the league because i'm not changing my style for anything funny enough we also have the most clean sheets okay not the most bolton are in there but we're in we have eight clean sheets and then bolton actually has 11 Bolton, Charlton and Northampton Town do have 11. So we're doing quite well in the league, but we are in 10th place. How? If you look at the form guide, you see that we haven't really had it easy this season. We've been dropping all the way from 2nd place and up to ninth, and then you can see 12th at some point and then we're now in 8th place, ninth place and then 10th place. So it's been an up and down season but I'm enjoying it and part of the reason why we struggled this much was because I was forcing you know, a certain group of players in my team to play in a certain way but I've done some tweaks to my tactics and I'm also going to show you the scouting method that I'm planning to use to actually help myself and get a good halfback because I don't actually have a halfback in my squad and the original Guardiola Barcelona prime tiki taka bant away was using a halfback in Sergio Busquets but we're going to go along and make a lot of changes in our tactic and we've gone on to do that it has helped us get good results particularly against Portsmouth and Wickham Wanderers we did make we did go on to make those changes as far back as when we were facing Port Vale so it took a while but then the changes started kicking in and then once it got to Portsmouth and Wickham Wanderers everything started clicking into gear the Reading one is a one-off game I have to admit but I know I'm not going to change my style for Carla, Blackpool and Cambridge it's going to be the same thing because I feel this is what works for the team as we are in right now so i have set up my scouting to find me a good halfback and some other players like attacking midfielders and i've gotten some recommendations so far so let's just take a sneak peek at who can possibly help us in that defensive midfield position as a halfback there's some players in here that do have dlp daniel ashead ads head ads shed is he ads shed i almost said ass head <laughs> god of mercy so he has good passing but his marking is not very great and what i was struggling with for this system is someone that can actually mark a halfback that can actually mark if you look at the the halfback attributes aggression marking bravery they are quite important to so add shed it's not really going to cut it for us we're going to look at somebody else in Carl winchester and hopefully he's going to have that marking okay marking is up in eight which is not very bad what i'm aiming for is 10 and 11 but he's a box-to-box -box midfielder aggression is not so good so i can't really use him as a ball winning midfielder but locking it all the way down let's look at halfback again and see not so great as well so most of my recommendations aren't quite good for halfback let's just look at all the other players that we have okay there's liam shaw on loan from wigan aha now we're talking this is our guy good marking good passing good aggression and anticipation as a halfback he is quite suited for this role he is he is the guy this is one player that i'm going to want to sign in liam shaw so we're going to just take a sneak peek at shaw liam shaw is on loan is it from wigan or from somewhere else to wigan athletic let's just take a sneak peek at his contract okay he's on loan from celtic to wigan so we can't really snatch him away from celtic right now he's the ideal candidate he's one player that i'm looking for that specimen so all these other players that are in blue are likely players that are on loan so let's look at dean cornelius at harrogate town Dean Cornelius at Harrogate Town has passing 13. Okay, that's good. That's very good. But his marking is 8. And considering that he's 22 years of age, it's something that we could build on. So I have to keep an eye on this one. So we might want to go on to look at Dean Cornelius a bit more. Add him to shortlist indefinitely and ask my scout to maybe scout him a bit more. Get a report for me for about a week and we'll 
take a sneak peek at him. There are a few more players in here. Thomas O'Connor at Wrexham. Now you're talking. I do like this one. I think I'm going to go immediately to sign Thomas O'Connor. Let's just look at his report and see what he has for us. He's a leading Skybet League 1 player. So that's good. Good for Skybet League 1. And I think Wrexham is currently in League 2. So we, we can actually snatch him away from Wrexham. Try to make an offer for Thomas O'Connor. He's going to cost us 46k. All we have is 140k in the... Okay, no, we, have, we do have a lot more than 140k. Okay, 237k. Got a bit of money to spend so let's see what we can do and try to bring in thomas o'connor so once we get thomas in we can look at our tactical changes and see what we can do so i'm just going to offer 50 at first and see what they say so just <laughs> 475k oh yeah you have got to be shitting me bro oh no way we're paying that no way we are paying that so let's see how we can tone this down or can we get a loan offer for him okay Wrexham are reluctant to let him go out on loan but if we take out all if we take out in his entire salaries and ask them to maybe pay pay him like 1k a month for him hopefully let's just see ah uh, they're not even ready to speak about that no way no way so we're going to just dive in and say 100k for thomas o'connor and they've deemed that unacceptable so we're going to have to just shoot this one and hope that at some point they're going to actually agree to let Thomas O'Connor go. We still have to keep our eye on somebody else, but we can't spend all our minutes on scouting. We're going to try to get a half back. Let's look at our tactical changes and what we did in, in our, you know, how to get our results good. I currently left it the same way it is. You can see that I have a complete wing back on attack duty and an inside forward playing on the same flank as him. I do have a deep line playmaker on support duty and a Metala on the right hand side playing also on support duty. This guy is to be on attack before what i'm trying to create here what you're seeing here is what barcelona used in the period when guardiola was in charge 2008 2009 2010 2011 period in the team i'm just going to clear everybody right now so you can see the system i have a fullback that is more conservative on the right hand side normally this right hand side conservative fullback is supposed to be on the left as eric abidal and then the complete wing back on attack duty which normally would be Dani Alves, is going to be on the right but i kind of mirrored the tactics so you could suit extra city's current group of players and that has been helping us so far we're kind of controlling the league but we weren't scoring that many goals and the reason why we weren't scoring that many goals was because i was playing a force nine on support and also a pressing forward on support occasionally we will get some goals but it was difficult to actually penetrate the opposition's defense so going through my recent match analysis i did get some information from my assistant manager and from my recruitment team or everybody else in the backroom staff that an advanced forward would likely help us because we have players that can actually play as advanced forwards and then that could help us get a lot more goals and that's what we did and then we did get a lot of goals against Wickham Wanderers and Portsmouth we did also score a few goals in the other games that we drew and against Reading it was kind of one of the tough games because I think Reading is trying to okay Reading are in the promotion places so team instructions wise we always had this passing directness on slightly lower or if possible very low and much shorter passing but that could help us control the game a lot but we weren't able to break teams down and score goals so the assistant manager based on the data hub analysis as well encouraged that we should go for a slightly higher tempo and that's what we're using right now that's what i'm going to use throughout january to be honest to see how the team actually operates with that we're not really walking the ball into the box right now but the shorter passing and slightly higher tempo is going to help us try to break teams down we're also playing narrowly before but that didn't help us break teams down so we tend to move the width a bit to fairly wide and sometimes extremely wide before i didn't have counter press turned on in my in transition phase but much later around october i kind of brought it in and it did help us in a way we weren't losing that many games we're controlling a lot more and even hold shape if you're trying to hold on to possession of the ball don't really you don't really need to turn on counter all the time you can press you can play with hold shape i think that sort of helps but for some reason we still need to play the game and see how it's actually working this is more tiki taka style of play hold on to possession don't waste it that kind of behavior and then if you go into our out of possession instructions we're normally playing with a high press and a much higher defensive line and then at some point we switch to a standard defensive line and a mid block but that didn't really help us because we're still conceding goals so moving to a slightly higher defensive line and sometimes a high a high press or a mid block is what we tend to use to try and you know hold teams off and then retain possession and try to hit them and create chances that way much more often trigger press has been the norm for the tactical system because it is tiki taka it's extreme we do have to hold on to possession and try to win it back as soon as we lose it so it does help to have that especially if you're playing with a high press so i will try to go and sign someone that can play as a halfback in defensive midfield for me what i'm going to do is to actually filter these recommendations by their alphabetical order and see because i notice that the best signing usually has the a plus grade um, selected on it so let me just filter this by a 
So there are a few people here in Josh Benson. There's another guy at Peterborough in Giando Fuchs. Giando Fuchs has good marking, good aggression. Ah, I do like this guy. But he can play as a halfback as well. And he has determination 16. So let's look at Josh Fuchs or Giando Fuchs and see if it's possible to actually make a deal for this guy. So what's the offer? So it's within the range of 13k to 130k. So I'm just going to bump this up so they wouldn't know what I'm doing and then just move it to like 15.5k. Try to suggest that. Okay, they say 120. But okay what's the, what's the catch why is he so easy to sign maybe he's on his last year of his contract possibly so i'm going to just disable this um additional payments and try to lock it down to 150 hopefully they're going to agree to that it's slightly more than the 130k that i planned on paying so let me just drop this in 135 okay they agreed to that so that's good so we have one defensive midfielder in there this will also allow some of my players that normally play in certain roles in the halfback role for me particularly to have additional cover so you can move them to their normal positions and then they can play there i'm still interested in josh benson so i might go ahead to sign him i also need a right back that can actually defend because my normal right back now is a very attacking right back and he's not very helpful defensively so we're going to use okay josh benson is transfer listed for 160k so we can actually spend the next amount of money on him i don't mind spending the 160k <laughs> sue me with my half back slash defensive midfielder sorted i've gone on to look for a full back that can actually play on the right hand side i've narrowed it down to you see full back on the right and then some of the other instructions that are the attributes that are relevant for a full back i've also matched it to 11 over 14 and a few names are coming up on the list but some of them perhaps they don't really have the experience that i'm looking for and i do like these two guys in harvey linstott and aaron mcgowan those are in fact actually aaron is the one guy that i do want to sign but let me just see if i can drop this down if i can see anybody else that could make a, a, you know could make the cut for us and i do like and count norton in here from swansea but it looks like he's getting towards retirement he's 35 pace and acceleration are not quite there but considering that it's not yet gray, so he may still have some pace left in him. I could go on to sign Kyle Norton or the other guy from Northampton Town. Where is he? Aaron McGowan. I think McGowan has some pace, but his agility is not quite there. So those are our two options. We're going to go ahead and scout these guys just for a week to see who we're working with. But I do like the idea of Kyle Norton and considering that he's coming with some experience as well. I think I'm going to sign Kyle Norton instead and then have the other guy as a backup signing in case Kyle Norton doesn't actually go quite well. So let's just go and make an offer. That's going to be the summary for this video. I'm going to go ahead and try to play a lot more games and get to the end of the season in episode 5. That's going to be the fifth and final episode for this series. Kyle Norton is available for 3.5k. By then we're going to see if we're able to actually get promoted with our Tiki Taka style of play. If possible, that's good. If not, we're going to try again in the following season and see how well we do. So thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next video.